welcome to our presentation on the pre-anesthetic agent. So this presentation will talk about the sedatives and tranquilizers, particularly the phenothiazines and benzodiazepines. As a recap, there are three groups of drugs that are used as tranquilizers and sedatives. So we have the phenothiazines, we also have the benzodiazepines and the alpha-2 adrenergic agonist or the alpha agonist. So what does a tranquilizer and sedative do? So first, uh, starting with the tranquilizer. So basically, tranquilizers reduce anxiety, so they calm the animal, but they may not decrease the awareness of the animal. For the sedatives, they, are also, they also have a calming effect. They reduce mental activity, but it causes sleepiness or hypnosis. That is why the sedatives are also known as the sedative hypnotic drugs. The terms are often interchangeable. And these drugs are given to calm the patient, to facilitate handling, to have a quieter induction with the uh, anesthetic agent, and to have a less stressful recovery from the anesthesia. For an animal that is uh, tranquilized or sedated, it is important to not leave these patients unattended unless in a kennel. So these animals can be very easily aroused, especially when the animal is tranquilized or aggressive if stimulated suddenly. They act on the central nervous system, so basically what they do is to depress the central nervous system. Again, there are three classes of tranquilizers and sedatives. We have the phenothiazines, the benzodiazepines, and the alpha-2 agonist. And uh, another property is that they may cause the third eyelid prolapse or ataxia. And only the alpha-2 agonists have analgesic effects. We start with the, the phenothiazine. So phenothiazines includes the ace promising and the chlorpromazine. So they are not a controlled substance. So again, when we say controlled substance, these are drugs uh, that are controlled by the government because it may be abused or cause addictions. So unlike the other pre-anesthetic agents, so they are not controlled substance. They may also be combined with other agents such as the atropine. So atropine is an anticholinergic. Ketamine is a dissociative anesthetic and opioids is an, an analgesic drug you know, that can be used for pre-anesthetic agent. So they can be administered orally, subcutaneously, IM, IV, but for IV, that is not common and it should be used with caution. These are the pharmacological effects of phenothiazines. So first, phenothiazines have a sedative effect. They basically affect the reticular activating center of the brain. And the sedative effect may last up to 24 hours at higher doses. Compared to other animals, the less sedation is seen in cats. And uh, when we are going to compare this with the alpha-2 agonist, meditomidine, so this is not as deeply sedating as that of meditomidine. So again, meditomidine is another, again, it belongs to the alpha-2 agonist drug. Alpha-2 agonist drugs are also considered as um, sedative drugs. They are useful also to sedate animals that are, of course, uh, afraid of thunderstorms and are going to travel. We also have the anti-emetic effect of the phenothiazine. So again, uh, these drugs have an anti-emetic property. They help in preventing vomiting, particularly uh, chlorpromazine. Phenothiazines have also been reported to have an antiarrhythmic effect, so they can antagonize the arrhythmias caused by other anesthetic agents. It also has an antihistaminic effect. It prevents the release of histamine and help decrease the allergic reactions. So phenothiazines include peripheral vasodilatation, so they may get a reflex tachycardia to compensate. Hypothermia may accompany vasodilation and hypotension may follow. We also have the personality effects. So occasionally, you may see excitement that can take about 48 hours to resolve, and this should be a caution to the others. These are the major properties you know, of phenothiazines. So, phenothiazines do not induce analgesia. It also has no reversal agent, or it has no antidote. In high doses, it do, it do not cause increased levels of sedation. So the sedative effect of phenothiazines is not dose dependent and it can induce significant hypotension. That is one of the major adverse effects of phenothiazines. It is also important to note uh, to reduce you know, the, the, the dose in geriatric patients. 
neonates and those with liver dysfunction as this uh, drug is mainly metabolized in the liver. Caution should also be observed in boxer dogs, hypotensive uh, animals, as again, this causes a significant hypotension, anemic, anim anemic no, animals, or dehydrated animals. So the most commonly used benthiazines in veterinary medicine is the ACE promising Mali, ACE promising or simply ACE. So uh, basically, we use phenothiazines, particularly ace promising, as a pre-anesthetic sedative. So basically, it produces uh, pre-anesthetic sedation. It also decreases the dose of the general anesthetic. So just like you know, any other uh, pre-anesthetic agents. And uh, of course, it eases the dose, it eases the induction of the anesthetic as well as the recovery from the anesthesia. Another property of the ACE promising malate is that it may be used with opioids for minor procedures, for example, the repair of a laceration in the skin. So you can use that you know, with opioids. Of course, opioids um, provides the analgesic property because, again, phenothiazines do not have you know, an analgesic property. It is also approved for use in horses, dogs, and cats. And... Um, it is also administered IV or IM. Uh, an important property of the phenothiazines, again, is that they have no reversal agent, so they have no antidote. So care must be taken for animals, for example, with heart disease, animals that are hypertensive, and animals that are having a liver disease. Again, uh, this drug is mainly metabolized by the liver, so again, take uh, consideration should be um, taken for animals having a liver disease. This drug will also slowly cross the placenta. Let's recap of the pharmacological effects of the ACE promising on different body systems. So for the CNS effects, again, uh, it has um, a calming effect. You know, the animal is reluctant to move. They have a decreased interest in the surroundings, but the animal is conscious, the, the animal is aware. And uh, of course, uh, it produces sedation, but this is less pronounced in cats. So this is usually not used in cats. This is more on dogs. It has no analgesic property, so it can be combined with opioids to provide analgesia. Uh, for the cardiovascular system, so again, um, the most pronounced effect of the ACE promisein in the cardiovascular system is that it causes peripheral vasodilatation. So, of course, when there is peripheral vasodilatation, what happens is you now the, all the blood vessels in the peripheral, uh, peripheral part of the body, such as in the extremities, will dilate. And this will um, lead to hypotension because there is, a, again, a decrease in the blood pressure. And as compensatory response of the body, so the body would tend to increase the heart rate in order for the heart to get the blood, um, everything that the blood that it has to be returned and try to get the blood pressure back up. You know? So the, the body tends to compensate by increasing the heart rate in order to uh, also increase the, um, to reverse you know, the hypotension. And of course, there is also a hypothermia. Um, it protects against arrhythmia, so again, it is an un also an antiarrhythmic agent and also decreases the cardiac output So because there is, again, no hypotension. So another effect of ACE promising is on the respiratory system, so be aware uh, because it worsens the depressive effect of the other drugs. So most of the drugs we use as premeds cause respiratory depression. It's going to decrease the respiratory rate, often decreases the depth or the depth of uh, respiration. So these animals most tend to be prone to hypoventilation and ultimately hypoxia. For the GIT, again for acepromacine, you know, uh, acepromacine is considered to be an antiemetic. Uh, of course, when we say anti-emetic, that is an anti-vomiting drug. And why would be that uh, be good you know, under anesthesia? So, of course, um, a drug that is an anti-emetic or anti-vomiting would decrease the risk for aspiration. 
Uh, it also prevents histamine release and decreases allergic response. So it, um, a lot of these drugs or a lot of drugs in general that cause a lot of sedation, like uh, your antihistamine in general. So they block you know, the histamine receptors in the brain and that in itself causes sedation. So a lot of sedatives have an antihistamine effect as well. These are the adverse effects of using azepromazine. So in the CNS, uh, one of the major ones is, is it will reduce the seizure threshold. So if you have an epileptic animal, you don't want to use azepromazine because it decreases the seizure threshold. If you give azepromazine to an epileptic patient, you're, you're much more likely to see seizures. Another important um, adverse effect is that it can produce aggression or excitement. So this is considered to be a paradoxical or an ironic effect of uh, azepromazine you know, because um, a lot of the sedatives and tranquilizers, some occasional patients will have you know, this paradoxical effect, you know, the aggression and excitement. For the cardiovascular system, again, the most important adverse effect of azepromazine is that it can cause peripheral vasodilatation and when there is peripheral vasodilation so it, it can induce hypertension and this is considered to be dose dependent so a major um, consideration for patients that are to be administered with this promising is that it should be known that the patient have no uh, of course heart disease and um, uh, again this hypertension can lead to the collapse of the animal which can concern most of the owners. Another adverse effect of the ACE promising is that it can cause penile prolapse. And again, this is uh, very important in large animals, particularly in horses. So there's a lot of drugs that cause penile prolapse in horses, and it's quite awesome to watch you know, this uh, penile prolapse from happening. So that can lead to permanent injury to the animal or for it to the, of course, the panel part, if the if that part stays out for too long. And it can also lead to uh, permanent injury. So the penis comes out of the sheath and it hangs down and uh, you can see that uh, the, the panel part. Uh, we also have a decrease in the PCV or the pack cell volume. So that is also an adverse effect of the administration of ACE promising. So a decreased PCV is basically a decrease in the RBC count. And it could be a lot uh, because a lot of the RBC go to the spleen. You know, so there is uh, this splenic engorgement that is being caused by the ACE promising. And the spleen gets engorged or expand. So instead of being in the circulation, the RBC are kind of packed now into the uh, spleen or it is being engorged by the spleen. So this happens with a lot of anesthetic agents now, aside from uh, ACE promising. These are the considerations for the use of the ACE promising. So number one is when we, you are going to use ACE promising, so you, you must be careful with, of course, the dose as well as the placement of the needles. So for example, when you are going to administer that IM, uh, SQ, and um, IV, so the, the, the needle should be placed uh, appropriately. Uh, we also have the increased potency and duration. So there is an increased potency and duration of action in certain patients like the geriatrics, the neonates, as well as in the debilitated animals. So this should be uh, taken into consideration when giving this in these patients. Uh, there is also some great considerations for um, dogs. Uh, these these um, breeds of dogs, the Australian Shepherds, the Giant Breeds, the Boxers, Greyhounds, the Terriers, as well as the Cats. These breeds uh, need careful use of the ACE promising. So these animals might have a genetic difference that makes them a little more susceptible to the adverse effect of the drug. We also have the treatment of the overdose. Again, yung phenothiazines, they, they don't have a reversal agent. So the only um, treatment for the only treatment for overdose is uh, the symptomatic treatment. For example, when there is hypotension, so you can treat that with a uh, sympathomimetic agent such as the norepinephrine and the phenylephrine, which is of course now indicated to 
uh, increase the heart rate and increase the blood pressure. So another uh, treatment for this uh, hypotension is uh, the administration of the fluid bolus.